Uh, hey guys, welcome to the video. So basically, a couple of months back, I put a review on my Omen laptop and also a games tested video. And a lot of people were commenting that their laptop was overheating and reaching like 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, which are ridiculous temperatures even for a gaming laptop. So here I am, I have created a comprehensive undervolting and a cooling pad guide for you guys. Firstly, I want to clear up some things uh, by saying that gaming laptops usually overheat, alright? That's just how they are. They don't have a beefy enough thermal system to maintain desktop like temps. Uh, the cooling system is just not gonna cut it. Now, if your laptop is getting above 90 degrees Celsius for the CPU or the GPU, well, that's a bad thing even for gaming laptops. And that's why you're over here today, so let us just get right into it. Okay, now, before we get into installing the applications, let me just quickly explain what undervolting is. Basically, you're reducing the voltage provided to the CPU to get better temperatures, that's all it is. This is safe because CPUs are generally fed more voltage than required at stock, so reducing it by small amounts will not be a problem at all. Okay, the first thing you want to do is install Throttle Stop. This is a software used for undervolting the CPU. If you want to use Intel XTU instead, you can, but honestly I would recommend you download Throttle Stop as Intel XTU does not offer many features that Throttle Stop does. By the way, all the links for the applications are in the description. Now once you have installed Throttle Stop, go and download MSI Afterburner. This will allow us to monitor temperatures and also give us granular control over the GPU. Once you have installed both of the applications in your computer, open up Throttle Stop. Now you should be getting a screen that looks something like this. So the first thing you want to do is enable Speed Shift. This is going to allow better and more efficient transmission of power between the CPU and the GPU. So now what you want to do is click on this button, FIVR, Fiber. Now click on CPU Core and under CPU Core Voltage, click on Unlock Adjustable Voltage. Now what we're doing here is reducing the voltage provided to your CPU uh, by very small amounts. This is not going to affect performance by that much but will give you way better temps and stop thermal throttling. You might even see a performance increase due to the CPU not throttling anymore. Uh, we are going to offset the voltage in very small increments of 10 millivolts. First bring the slider to your left until you reach negative 50 millivolts. Run a CPU stress test like Cinebench R20 or the one in the Intel XTU or you can even play some games and see if your system is stable. If it is stable, bring the slider to the left and reduce the voltage provided by another 10 millivolts. Once again, run a stress test or play games and see if it's stable. Repeat the process for the CPU cache and the Intel iGPU. You just have to keep doing this until the point where your system crashes or is not stable anymore. It's different for every computer so you have to find that yourself. You can search your computer or CPU up online in Reddit or something and see other people's last table undervolt. Now if your system crashes or becomes unstable, don't worry, just reboot your system, go back into throttle stop and go back to the last table undervolt. After you have done this, click on TPL. Now depending on your computer, these two values over here might be different. But generally, it's either 15 watts or 45 watts for laptops. If you have a 45 watt chip, you're going to want to reduce the max wattage to 40 or even 35. You could go lower, but that would definitely reduce performance. Reducing the max DDP is optional, guys, and you might not want to do it if you absolutely want the best performance. But if you guys still have high temperatures above 85 degrees Celsius, I would suggest you do what I did just now. Also, reduce the turbo time limit to 1 second by pulling the slider to the left. Now, if you still have high temperatures, you could try disabling turbo completely, but you will definitely notice a drop in your performance. But in turn, you're going to get really good temperatures. See, the point I'm trying to make is, uh, it's just about finding that sweet spot of getting better temperatures, but also not taking a massive hit in performance. And that depends on the temperatures you're currently working with, right? If you have something that is not run that hot, you could just get away with undervolting and you'll probably be good. But again, that's not the case for everyone. Okay, so after you've done all of this, you should be getting at least 5 to 10 degree drop in your temperatures. Here are my results.
Now, if your CPU is rather hot, even after undervolting, you have two options. You can either reapply thermal paste by opening your laptop, or you can get yourself a cooling pad. I would not recommend applying thermal paste unless you really know what you're doing and know how to open your laptop properly and safely. But you can definitely get some nice gains if you properly reapply thermal paste. However, that's not what we're looking at today. We're gonna be seeing if cooling pads actually work. The one I'm using is called the Afmat Laptop Cooler. I got this one on Amazon for like 60 bucks. Uh, now, there are a couple of other options available for cheaper on Amazon, but the reason I got this one is because it directly blows air into my laptop's fans. The positioning of my laptop and its fans are complementary. It has a rubber seal which kept my laptop in place and made sure air was not escaping. Uh, it has fans spinning at a higher RPM than most of the laptop coolers on Amazon as well. There's a LED strip over here in the front and two in the back as well. Uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool, but also this thing is pretty loud. If you put it to max fan speed, it gets up to like 50 decibels. Now let me talk about a couple of disadvantages or cons of this laptop cooler. Now if you don't have a laptop which has fans taking an air from the bottom, don't get this one because it blows air to the bottom of your laptop, not anywhere else. Also if you don't want a loud noise constantly running in the background when you're using it, don't get this one. You can maybe get a cooler which is more low profile and has fans spinning at a lower RPM, although they will not be able to achieve the same performance as this cooler. That said, let's get into the benchmarks and see what the results really are. As you just saw, my results did see an improvement, especially after that undervolt. So I would highly recommend undervolting your CPU, because like it's just a couple of clicks man and, and you get better temperatures instantly, so why the hell not? As for the laptop cooler, at least in my case, I would say it was worth it. It gave me better temperatures and slightly better performance, but that won't always be the case as it's slightly different for every single laptop. If your laptops have fans absorbing air from the bottom and is between 15 to 17 inches, this cooler should work without any problems and should give similar results. Anyway guys, we hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you guys have any questions or problems and I'll be sure to answer in the comment section down below. Consider subscribing and like the video if it was helpful to you guys, uh, it helps us to know if it was actually helpful. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video.